Hi y'all, making boxes is a lot of fun and I think making a, a rook chess piece box is going to be great because the concept of a chess piece just sort of gets people attention and says, pick me up. This is not a box, it's a pencil pot I made some time ago, but I think it's a great shape for, for a box. Hi y'all, I'm Mike Peace. I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, and techniques to help you become a better wood turner. If you've turned a couple of boxes before, time to step up your game with this rook lidded box. So here I'm showing, I've already got the blank uh, mounted in the between centers, uh, partly rounded. Uh, check to make sure, see how close I'm getting, if I'm getting some bounce. Uh, using a spindle roughing gouge here to smooth the surface. And then I mark the end for the tenon, double check it with a, uh, a template that I've got. And then I take my beading and parting tool and make that uh, chuck tenon down to, down to that mark. Put it in the chuck push in the center to make sure I've got it flush against all the jaws. Tighten it up good. Now I'm facing off what will be the very top of the box. Uh, just want this nice and smooth where I'm going to have the crenellations. And then I use the pencil pot as kind of a, a storyboard to mark off some of the where the, the lid is going to be and, and also where the bead is. So it's going to be separating the top from the base. I mark the inside of the, of the crenellations. I don't go as far as I uh, all the way out because I'm just going to hollow uh, not down very deep because I'll come back, put it on the lathe, do some more work. Same thing on the thickness of the crenellation. I will do that. I'm using an inside out tool. It's a reground old Harbor Freight uh, tool, kind of a specialty box scraper. And now I can use my skew to mark that bead, bead feature. Just doing a little bit of work on the bead. I don't slope the, uh, the the rook top. I will finish that later, uh, as I can't do it now because of the jam chucking. Now I'm going to use my beading and parting tool to bring the diameter down a little bit below that that bead. An easy way to lay out six crenellations is just simply cut a, a band of paper, uh, mark where the two ends meet, measure it in millimeter, and divide it. 247 divided by six sections, 41 millimeters each. Then I just lay out 41, and then I use that to to mark mark the crenellations. Now I kept this uh, block in the in the chuck, so I didn't lose concentricity. And now I'm marking it off into those six uh, six crenellations. And I'm using my quarter inch tool just to mark the thickness on each side of those marks. So I'll get it a little over a quarter quarter of an inch. Do that all the way around. And then I'll transfer those measurements uh, from, from the side. Transferring those uh, quarter inch marks and filling them in on the top where you're going to be cutting is, makes it easier to line up the bandsaw. jig up and use it as a carving holder and I use a quarter inch uh, chisel to smooth the marks in the crenellations and it only takes a, a just a few few strokes I can do any final cleanup with sandpaper So here I am again with that inside out tool, then scraping it down maybe another uh, eighth of an inch. And uh, this is pretty soft wood. I'm getting some tear out, so it doesn't take me too long to figure out. I'd probably be better off uh, reaching for a, a spindle gouge and 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 cutting cutting out the the the, uh, the top, get a little smoother finish. 
probably uh, noteworthy. Uh, I put this in reverse so I could cut on the other side and make it a little easier to, to get right into that uh, edge of the crenellation. I take a craft stick and, and sand uh, between the crenellations, kind of smooth it up a little bit. I'm using a 3 8 inch, uh, very shallow fluted uh, detail gouge here to to cut this bead. Just careful to trim it around a little bit on each side. And then I found a, a storyboard, so I'm marking the rest of the features. This is the storyboard I used for that uh, pencil pot. Here I'm actually uh, I'm doing a little bit of turning on the bottom bead uh, that, that's going to be the top of the base. Uh, then I'm going to come back and that area in between the beads I'm going to bring it down. That's actually going to be the tenon uh, on the, the, the lid. So I'm bringing that down a little bit. And those two beads are going to separate the lid from the box to help to disguise the, uh, the fit. After I'm bringing it down, do a little more cleanup on the on the bead. So I'm coming in here with a quarter inch parting tool, followed up with a beading and parting tool, uh, almost three eighths inch. Clean up that area that's going to be that that tenon. I'm smoothing the very top here. I had just a tiny bit of tear out in the bandsaw, so I'm cleaning it up with the, with the skew and, and do a little bit of sanding, sanding here. Uh, I start the parting cut with a thin parting tool before moving over to the bandsaw to finish the cut. This jig makes it a lot easier to make a thin, very thin cut on a, a box lid. I'll have a link at the end of this video to the jig making video. So because we're going to jam chuck this to hollow it out, we're going to we're going to measure that and we're going to put it against here. Using a jam chuck was about the only good way I could see to um, hollow out the bottom of, of the of the inside of the lid. And all I had was a piece of dog rough dogwood had some worm holes in it. I'd have preferred something softer like pine or poplar. Like fitting the box lid, you got to take your time. It's too loose, so I'll take this down a little bit and just taper it a little bit more. And we'll be done. side and then we'll embellish it. Uh, it's a little too soft for texturing so I'm going to just make a few, few beads. Now I'm back working on the base, uh, doing a little bead at the bottom to kind of tuck it in. Double 
check it against our pencil pot, mark some more features. Now I taper the walls down to that bead. I couldn't do this before because I had to keep it parallel to fit into that, uh, that jam chuck. sander I use from Woodturner's Wonders and they have this uh, hex shank uh, sanding mandrels that are just great. Uh, they come in uh, different sizes, different lengths. Uh, they're just perfect for deeper things like a like a box and they, you can just use that same type of easy lock uh, system as his other sanders. There's always a temptation to reverse a box on a short set of chuck jaws resist that temptation because inevitably they're going to split. Without tailstock support, I have to be very careful to put the cutting pressure directly down the middle uh, in order to not damage, damage the wood or split it as it's being held on the chuck.
Not only is this rook box a great standalone project, what about uh, turning it, making it a feature for uh, a bookend? If you like this episode on making this rook box, you might check out my uh, link here to playlist on making boxes. Also, I've got a link to that bandsaw jig you used me to cut off the the top and also the uh, the crenellations. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.